don't beat yourself up if like you're not feeling it right because Mm -hmm. nothing good is going to come out of that like Mm -hmm. the best content comes out of like when you're just like sitting there like late at night and this idea pops up to you and you're like oh wow that could be really interesting and you just take your camera out and you start filming it and you start scripting it and then within like 24 hours you have this like piece of art that was born out of an authentic experience Hi, this is Jitnav Lakha, your host at Evercoach and your host at the Business of Coaching podcast. And today's conversation is with a phenomenal, phenomenal viral video creator, Sarah Snow. I met Sarah first at one of our events called AFEST, where she was working with Jay Shetty and helping him create content around, around his own platform. And then I got reintroduced to her at one of our gatherings and I was just so impressed with the quality of work that she was producing at the time that I said, hey, could you be my coach and train me on how to really create better content and better videos? And, and so as I invited her in and, and she walked me and my wife Nita both through how to really create powerful content, how to think about content, how to think about different acts of a video, I was just blown away and I thought that would be phenomenal education for our platform and for this conversation and for this podcast, which is why today my guest is Sarah Snow. And before we start the interview with Sarah, I want you to watch this video by Sarah. The only thing more exhausting than loving someone who doesn't love you back is hoping they'll eventually come around. So when someone isn't ready for us, we try harder. We continue to show up in hopes that they'll want us back. But the truth is, if someone isn't ready for you, for the glory of you and the uniqueness of you, then they simply are just not ready. But don't let that shrink you and don't let it make you become less of a person. No. Because when people say they're into you, but are just not ready for you, what they're really saying is that they're not ready for themselves, which also means you will never get the best of them. And you, you deserve everything of the best. That's why whatever it is you're seeking from other people, try to find a way to give it to yourself. Because love shouldn't be a war you have to fight to keep hold of. And at the times where you feel like you have nothing left to give and your heart is running on empty, I want you to remember this. You are too full of everything that makes you whole to ever be loved in halves. Hi, Sarah. It is so exciting to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It is. Um, I was so impressed when I first met you. I really got introduced to you. I got introduced to you at one of our events, and then I mm-hmm. got reintroduced to you later after that at one of the gatherings that we had here mm-hmm. in Los Angeles with my business partner, Rishin. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, that sounds really exciting what this girl's doing. And mm-hmm. then of course I watched your videos and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then we actually worked with you for a day. Me and my wife, Nita, mm-hmm. both, we brought you in for a day to just work with us on just getting ourselves out of our minds and really be able to find our messages and mm-hmm. be able to create videos around that and so forth. And I was just like, damn, I gotta get Sarah <laughs> to come on this podcast the day I started. And so I'm very grateful that you oh, took the time you out so much. and, and come, come down here for this conversation. So before we even get started, of course, I gave my context of how mm-hmm. I know you, but there's so much to your story. Why don't we start from there? Why don't we start, mm-hmm. Sarah, who are you? How did you get started? What are you representing right now? Yeah. So. Um, I'm a video creator. I've been creating videos for the past seven years. Uh, I started off working with brands and startups and helping them define their messages and build up their communities. Um, And one of uh, the first things that I've ever kind of, one of my first campaigns that ever sort of like went viral when I started out was a campaign um, for an app called Glide. And they had a video messaging app. And I noticed that as the, like the community manager, I noticed that their users 
were using sign language to communicate because okay. a lot of the users were deaf and hard of hearing and mm -hmm. English wasn't their first language. American Sign Language was. So mm -hmm. this app was like helping them text because typing isn't as natural to them. So I just thought it was really interesting and I was like, well, let's look into this. And I got a sign language teacher to teach me sign language and I took like five lessons and then I put out a video in sign language and I was like, hey guys, like I noticed that you have been using our app, like yeah. what do you think? And they were just like so excited that someone was noticing them as a, like a community. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that it just sort of like blew up. And then from there, like I noticed the importance of understanding your audience and trying to interact with them if you're a brand. Um, and then when it comes to more personal videos, you kind of dictate what the content is from the beginning. So it's like you create the content for the audience you're trying to attract. Whereas when mm -hmm. you have a brand, you don't know really necessarily who's going to come and like stick to your product. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the other way around. But I kind of learned that in that company. Um, and then I worked for a company called Upworthy for a few years where I learned like the ins and outs of like viral video optimization. Um, and then I spent the last like two years with a company called Wisdo where I was like traveling around the US just interviewing people that were going through significant life challenges and trying to extract the wisdom that they've learned from those challenges from them to like put it into a product because they're creating a database of wisdom. And so I just kind of combined all three of the things I learned at those jobs when you know, I was in my early 20s um, and applied them to what I create today, um, which is just um, being able to connect with an audience mm -hmm. together with the wisdom that I've learned throughout my life. And then I combine that with the data and the science that I learned at Upworthy. That's, that's amazing. And what I love about that, that particular story is the level of curiosity you had at each stage. Oh yeah. To be, to be able to ask the question, Hey, a lot of our people are using sign language and, mm -hmm. and we should probably create something around that or mm -hmm. to be curious about different stories at Visdo and be mm -hmm. able to extract that wisdom. How do you stay so curious? That's like the that's like my motto for life. I whenever someone asks me like what is like the trait that I find the most attractive in like a person, or the thing that um, I find like the most enticing is like curiosity. Like if someone's curious about the world and about people, I just find them so interesting. Mm -hmm. So I think like naturally I gravitate towards that myself because I'm like that. It's like. I want to know more about this person. I want to know about this thing. I want to know how things in the world work. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's kind of, it's just what I like live and breathe. So, <laughs> um, like, I, I just don't see any other way to live if you're not going to be curious. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how curiosity has mm -hmm. played into your idea of video creation. You, you have a phenomenal mm -hmm. approach towards telling stories and structuring stories and so forth. And we'll get into that mm -hmm. maybe later in this conversation, but generally, how has that played into it? The reason why I'm asking this question is because yes, mm -hmm. it's curiosity is interesting and important mm -hmm. and so forth, but often we fall back to systems, right? Because mm -hmm. we want to like go, okay, I just want to get this done, you know, mm -hmm. like, and so we, we lose that curiosity and we mm -hmm. get more attract, att attracted to and attached to how can I get this done as fast as I possibly can so I can move mm -hmm. on to the next thing. So I want to kind of tap into how is that played in so people can see the value of curiosity. Yeah. Well, I think that people can tell when they're watching a piece of content if this was something that was just done quick, kind of off the cuff, or if there was thought put into it. Like sometimes you'll watch a piece of content and you're like, wow, how do they think of that? And then you sort of getting into that mindset makes you value that piece of content as something that's valuable and that you would want to share with your friends. I kind of focus, because I, because I do social media videos and I haven't worked on like a feature film yet or anything like that, all of the content that I work on creating has the goal of being shared. So if, if someone shares something with their friends, it means that they care about it. And then you have to get into, well, what will make someone care about this? And you have to kind of think about that. So I think that for specifically for viral videos, if you're not curious about why people would share it, it's not nothing like no it's not going to go anywhere i find with myself whenever i'm like really struggling to like 
figure out the concept and whenever I'm like oh man I don't know if this is gonna work and it's like really hard and then I like get 90% of the edit done and then I'm like you know it would be like really cool if I just had like this sound effect or if I had this like graphic and like it would take me an extra week to do but I think it would be worth it those are the times when the videos go really viral because if like you're having a fun time and an interesting time creating it mm. people are gonna have an interesting and fun time watching it so like if you're not having like if you're not being challenged and if like if everything's predictable then it's going to be predictable to the audience it's going to be not that interesting to the audience but if you're like actually solving a problem or like figuring out some sort of challenge while you're creating it that's a really fun thing for the audience to watch it's so interesting our audience the people who will be watching mm -hmm. this podcast is called the business of coaching podcast so mm -hmm. It, it is very much directed to its trainers and mm -hmm. coaches and educators in mm -hmm. the world who would love to be able to take their message and really be able to express it to a larger audience. Mm -hmm. And creating videos is one form mm -hmm. of doing that. And being able to go viral is a great, um, it almost feels like a blessing if it happens, right? <laughs> and which is why most of us believe that there is no science to viral videos, mm -hmm. which I know is not what you believe. Yeah. And you kind of, like kind of touched upon that for mm -hmm. a second here because you started with the conversation saying, are you interested in making this video? Are you caring enough? You threw mm -hmm. in a few words that I know are, are something that stuck with me when we had our day mm -hmm. because you were like, well, have, do you care that much about mm -hmm. what you're about to write and mm -hmm. about to create mm -hmm. and kind of shifted my perspective about how I write mm -hmm. my scripts and how I write my content. So I want to touch a little bit upon that because I know that are, that are broad ideas in a way. Mm -hmm. They're kind of broad ideas in a way. It's like you should care, mm -hmm. right? But it is interesting to explore them because if we can shift our mindset towards mm -hmm. it, if we can shift from going, I need to produce a video and it seems like everybody's getting a viral video instead of that going, hey, what am I creating? How is this interesting? How do mm -hmm. I care? So if you could walk us through a little bit on that and how you think about it, how you approach it, what has been your approach? Well, on a personal level, when I'm creating content, so I think that it's kind of divided into two different categories because there's like ads that go viral for brands that are selling a product. And then there are videos that go viral for people that are creating like a personal brand. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to like touch on more of the personal brand stuff yeah. to start off with. So if you're trying to build up a personal brand, then people have to start getting to know you. So you kind of have to look at your life and map it out and think of, well, what are the things that I've been through in my life? that have taught me the most or where I've grown the most and how could I relate that to my overall message? Mm -hmm. So for me, I create a lot of videos about relationships. Um, my entire life, I've sort of um, went through a lot of hardships around that, starting with like the relationship that I had with my parents growing up, growing up in an extremely like religious environment um, and then coming out when I was older. Um, I you know, because I grew up kind of in a place where my, my lifestyle wasn't accepted. I had, I did, like didn't have any role models for what a relationship looks like. And I kind of struggled throughout my adulthood with that a lot. And I went through a lot of heartbreak and pain. And so I knew that what I wanted to focus on was going to be about like love and relationships and sort of mm -hmm. like heal that, like my own sort of, um, you know, inner, like, trauma and pain with that and I um I found some like really you know I found some talented people like filmmakers and I worked with a really talented writer on a lot of videos and they were all around the topics that could relate back to love and relationships so um I the first video I ever put out was called watch this if you're feeling lost which was just like the beginning of my story and I had no idea that people were going to watch it or like be engaged in it and then like the topic started getting more interesting. So like the writer that I worked with, um, Heidi Preeb, she's really talented um, and is an author of a few books. She had a piece called um, wa um, Read This If Nobody Texted You Good Morning. And I mm -hmm. like, was like reading it. I was like, oh, wow, that's like really interesting because I think that that's something a lot of people go through, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's like in the digital age kind of love is um, is like shown through text messages and um like not like waking up in the morning and getting that good morning text feels so good to a lot of people so when they don't have it it's kind of like lacking so that was like one of the first videos i did that went viral and then we just continued on from there so we covered like topics like forgiveness and acceptance um and timing in relationships and rejection 
And I just kept thinking of like, well, what's the next topic around this? Like what else is challenging about relationships? And like, mm -hmm. if you think about it, there's so many different challenges. And then you have to ask yourself, well, what's the truth about those situations? Mm -hmm. What's like, what's universal, universal to all of these? What's the problem and what's the solution? And a lot of the times the solution isn't clear because like, how do you heal a broken heart? Mm -hmm. I don't know, there's like a million <laughs> ways, right? Um, and then you have to explore these topics of life. So for me, it was about thinking of what I was struggling with and what I was looking for answers in. And that's what made it really interesting for me. Cause I was like, oh, I, I'm, I'm like genuinely curious to learn about these topics. Mm -hmm. So I think that the audience could feel that. But if you're gonna be like, well, if you're gonna start off with the mindset of, well, how can I first, what's gonna go viral, right? So if everyone's making a video called before you give up, you know, watch this, or before you waste time, watch this. Mm -hmm. If you create that same video, it's not gonna go viral. You first mm -hmm. have to ask yourself, what am I trying to solve? And what do I find really interesting? And what mm -hmm. could I talk about and research for hours and not get bored by? Mm -hmm. And then you take that and then you combine it into like a two or three minute clip mm -hmm. and it's magical. Mm -hmm. So you went over a lot of things. So I'm going to break down everything that you <laughs> yeah, kind sorry. of, I just I kind like, of no, went, but it's I awesome. Went. It's great. It's yeah. perfect because the first part of the conversation that we had where you went, well, look at your life story yeah. and break it apart as to the moments where they were transformational, the moments where you were like mm -hmm. big breakthroughs, big moments, mm -hmm. which everybody can relate to in context of being able to go back into their own story, mm -hmm. right? But usually what we find, and I'm, I struggle with it, so let me put it, put it as, as me as a case study here, is to say, I feel like I have one story, mm -hmm. right? I have just one, it's one life. It's like, that's the story that I got, right? But clearly that's not the case. Mm -hmm. You get many different moments mm -hmm. and there are different stories that will come out of those moments so let's start there first. And then I want to go mm -hmm. into how you talked about don't copy others, but let's, let's shelf <laughs> that for a second here. Let's go first here, right? So let's say somebody has done the work and go, fine, I know three or four moments of my life, mm -hmm. uh, which could be stories. Mm -hmm. How, first of all, is there a process to actually find that? Let's go there first. Mm -hmm. Is there? Uh, well, I think it's, it's, it's really simple. It's just, well, what are you curious about? Hmm. What do you think about what keeps you up at night? Like, yeah. what, what are you kind of like, what is your brand? Like, if you have a brand that's around, if you're like a fitness coach, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you're a health coach, mm -hmm. then ask yourself why? Like, why are you so curious about that? It's like mm -hmm. asking yourself why you're curious about the things that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where you find the answers. But, mm -hmm. um, but it's a journey. Like, I, I don't necessarily think that you're going to like sit and write things out and then figure it out in one go. I mm -hmm. think that a lot of it is trying, is testing videos out and seeing like, what videos am I creating that I feel um, like let down by and what videos am I creating that I feel amazing mm -hmm. creating. Um, and that takes time. Um, it, it took me like, it took me a, quite a bit of time to get to that spot where I'm like, I know what videos I wanna create. And even then you're gonna have periods mm -hmm. where you go, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you have periods where you kind of go up and down, but um, yeah, it's like the process of creation is like um, it's it's like a mystery, but it's also like the most evident thing in the world. It's like, mm -hmm. it, yeah. Yeah, you you do the tango. You t kind of go, okay, I've found one point. You work off that, and hopefully, you'll find the next point. Yeah. Kind of stay curious about that. Yeah. Now let's say I found the point. Let's say there is one story we found, like the one that you found about mm -hmm. love and relationships, mm -hmm. right? You found one story and you mm -hmm. started there. How do you, what's the next step? What do mm -hmm. you, what does one do? They know the point. Mm -hmm. Do they just tell their story? I know you said research mm -hmm. and everything, but I kind of like emphasize on that and I want to go, okay, what is it that, that I'm doing the moment I find my point? Well, you just have to think about all the different topics that relate to it and just start writing things down, mm -hmm. right? So um, if you're, I'm gonna go back to like the health coach, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're a health coach, um, maybe you have a topic about like loving your body anyways, no matter where you are in your journey, right? Maybe there's a topic of motivation that comes with it because not everyone wants to like get out and do it. Maybe there's a topic around um, financials because some people think that it's too expensive to be healthy like you think of like what are all the problems surrounding this topic mm -hmm. that I can solve mm -hmm. or not that I could solve but I'm passionate enough to find the answers to mm -hmm. so depending on how big that mission is and depending on how 
passionate you are about the things you're doing, that will kind of dictate what the topics are. So mm-hmm. I chose love, which is a very big topic. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of problems and challenges that come with that. Um, and your topic could just be like life and death, which is like mm-hmm. super interesting. Your topics could be anything you want it to be. Um, I think you just have to start writing things down um, and just make a list of just different topics that you find the most interesting and that you relate to. And Mm. those topics will end up being your videos. Mm. So you pick one broad category, Mm -hmm. which is basically whatever you're passionate about, like Mm -hmm. fitness, if you're a fitness coach, Mm -hmm. and then you go, okay, this is the broad category. These are the sub elements Mm -hmm. that I want to maybe talk about. And Mm -hmm. then you go research. Is that the natural next step? Yeah, you go research and then Mm -hmm. again, well, you the, crowdsource, oh, okay. right? Because or you crowdsource, okay. Yeah, because yeah. like, I think that the problems that many people try to solve are too big for one person to actually solve, right? So mm. like, I any of my videos, I know like I'm presenting them, but these ideas aren't like just born in my brain. They're born from conversations that I have with people or from people that I work with and collaborate with. Because I think that like these big problems that you're trying to solve, you need brilliant minds to kind of come together and solve them and there's no creator out there especially in the self-help space that is just coming up with this stuff on their own like it's it doesn't exist it's all and i think it's it's a beautiful thing right it's beautiful that we all can go through experiences in our lives and then oh it's like oh this is the one thing i learned and that's what you learn and you learn and then it comes together and into something beautiful so something i always recommend people that are really if they're trying to get into that space um is just ask people kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to create a video on this topic. What do you think about it? And then they'll maybe mm-hmm. talk for 20 minutes and then you'll pull out one sentence that they said that like really stuck with you and you write it down. And then you talk to another person. I remember I did this with one of my videos called The Truth About Rejection because um, it was something that I felt needed to be talked about, but I myself hadn't experienced it in a way that a lot of other people experience it. So I wrote down a list of like the top five people in my life that I really respect and um, value and feel like they've gone through things in their life. And I just called them up and I was like, what do you think about rejection? And it Mm. was just so interesting, the conversations I had and what they said. And then I would just like write down lines and then you end up with like a list of like, you know, five or 10 lines from people that you've learned from. And then that's sort of the like skeleton of your script. And then Mm. you can start writing it out. You know what mm. I mean? Yeah, no. I and and that can mean. come from you as well. Like you could sit with yourself and ask yourself those questions and then come mm-hmm. up with those lines and then write out the skeleton. I just think that there's so much beauty in being able to like reach out to your community and like find out, well, am I not being biased? Am I actually getting the proper data? That's amazing. I love the idea of just getting out and talking to people. Yeah. I love that idea of saying, mm-hmm. hey, why don't we just reach out to four people, five mm-hmm. people that we literally love, trust. And and in the coaching community, there is community. Mm-hmm. Like you can actually talk to other people and they will have insight towards the topic because they're probably similar types of coaches, if not same, at least the category. Mm-hmm. And so they might have thoughts and opinions on that. And every single time you have a conversation, you probably have an insight. Mm-hmm. And each of that insight can be translated or combined into creating the video yeah that's so beautiful I, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that and so great to know your process where you actually literally call them and say hey yeah call yeah. them and go hey what do you think about rejection and have them talk about it for five yeah. ten minutes and yeah, you will yeah. know oh this is this is interesting this is a different mm-hmm. perspective yeah and it's kind of turned into a thing where like almost all of my friends now and people that I interact with are creatives and like Mm. we're constantly bouncing ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that if like you really want to get into like, because I think that like a lot of people want the end result of like the viral videos Mm -hmm. of the like beautifully crafted videos, but they don't necessarily like the process of creation. Mm -hmm. And I think that you have to love the process of creation to really make, like you could hire someone and they can do 10 videos for you and maybe one of them will go viral and the rest of them will be kind of good. Mm -hmm. But if you're not like passionate about creation and creating art and creating something that will last, you know, will have a lasting effect on people, it, it's not like a sustainable way to, to create. Mm. You have to really love it. Um, and and that's kind of what I felt like right now I'm kind of with a group of creators and like we're all just so passionate about creating that like it never gets boring and it never gets old. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so yeah i think that like that's also a really big thing is mm -hmm. like do you really want this because like do you want this because you want to get like some views and you're trying to sell something or do you want this because you're actually trying to like make a difference in the world mm. you know what i mean no i know what you mean and i love that element that you'd mentioned like you just kind of like glazed over uh but <laughs> where you said don't create for for just creation purposes create because it has a lasting impact on people i'm yeah. kind of paraphrasing you right no, now but, but that's what i would say I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the line uh, and uh, so, so yeah I think that's beautiful and I think um, a lot of people in my position mm -hmm. who are coaches or consultants or teachers or trainers because we produce so much content we sometimes uh, kind of lose focus towards saying hey is this going to last for a lifetime or it's just because I have to produce a video a week yeah that don't know? ever get yeah. I like I'm so against that like there are people who like Cause I, okay. So the way that I look at it is that like the process of creation is like a valve that sort of like, it could only open on one side. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're either creating and then you're letting your creativity kind of pour out or you're learning. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you have to close the creation side so that you can sort of let some more learnings kind of like flow through. Um, and I feel like if you're just constantly in a mode where you're creating, you're going to end up becoming repetitive because you're not learning anything new to actually talk about. So mm. I find that creators that I see that are just like pumping out video after video after video after video, their content gets very repetitive. It's the same topics, maybe told slightly differently, but it's nothing new. And it could work for some time, but I see them eventually getting burnt out. And then they're like, well, what happened? And it's like, well, you didn't take any breaks and you didn't go out and live, right? If you're gonna teach people how to go out and live their lives, you have to go out and live yours. <laughs> and like, you have to experience things in order to have something to talk about. And so I don't think that it's natural to like tell people that, they have to be super consistent all the time. I think, yes, if you're starting out, you should at least have like 10 videos, mm -hmm. right? That you want to talk about, but like, don't beat yourself up if like you're not feeling it, right? Because mm -hmm. nothing good is going to come out of that. Like mm -hmm. the best content comes out of like, when you're just like sitting there like late at night and this idea pops up to you and you're like, oh wow, that could be really interesting. And then you just take your camera out and you start filming it and you start scripting it. And then within like 24 hours, you have this like piece of art that was born out of an authentic experience rather than how can I fabricate an authentic experience? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah I, I like the metaphor. I think this metaphor is beautiful and I think it's something to kind of anchor into every single time mm -hmm. you get into that repetitive mode mm -hmm. because it's just once your business also scales or even when you're starting out, it's just one of those things that you're yeah. like, okay, let me just produce because mm -hmm. it's like getting, it's also getting out mm -hmm. of your zone, mm -hmm. right? But I love the metaphor of it's like a wall. If you're creating, 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 mm -hmm. you're not learning as much as you probably should be learning or could be learning to be able to inform your creativity in a powerful way for it to continue to create that, yeah. that amazing effect it needs to create in the world outside. Mm -hmm. So I think I love that metaphor of saying, mm -hmm close the wall of creativity once in a while and make sure you're learning uh, yeah. or living life yeah. so you can be creative again. Yeah. And that, that, but that's specifically when it comes to like creative videos, because there's also like, there's also some videos that go viral and are successful that are more of the like vlogging style. And I think mm -hmm. that's called documenting. Yeah. So you, if you want to put out like consistent video content, you can like switch between creative videos to just documenting what you're doing. Like if you're a business person and you're going every day and you have interesting things to show and you have a camera and you want to invest time documenting yourself going through those experiences and you think that there's going to be something people can take away and gain value from, then by all means do it. Um, but um, it's just a different style of video. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a good way to keep things going. But you have to look at it as I'm not creating like this beautifully crafted video i'm documenting an experience so that people can gain some value out of it mm. it's a little bit different it's it's different for sure and i think i, I want to kind of stick with creative video yeah conversation for now because of the t type of people that we are speaking to yeah uh documenting in a coaching world would be interesting because you can't really document your coaching session it yeah. will be unfair to the client so yeah. it's just because the client conversations like they're trying to go deep and you're like 
nope, I'm just going <laughs> to record this and put it on YouTube. Yeah. It's not going to work. Uh, what I loved before, and I wanted to touch that upon because it does happen that we fall into that trap of mm -hmm. saying, hey, that person's creating such great videos. What if I, if I could have or make videos like that? Right? You, mm -hmm. you kind of touched upon don't try to copy somebody. Yeah. Uh, so, so let's explore that a little bit more in context of also going what happens when you end up copying. Yeah, well, I think and what that, to do instead. Yeah, I think I think that I've seen a lot of. Well, I think there's a different elements to copying when it when it, you're creating videos. So there's like copying where you'll see a video creator create a video that's exactly like another person's creator, and you're like, okay, we've seen this before. Then there's copying when it comes to people um, in their scripts using lines from like people's books or mm. just quotes that like aren't theirs and without crediting or attributing that to anyone, which um, you see happen a lot. Um, and I just think that like when you get into that, it, it, it becomes a very messy game because then it's like you're kind of relying on these other people for a lot of your own creative, like you're, you're like relying on them in order to like move forward. And eventually you're, you're going to feel like, well, this doesn't really feel like me and it's gonna kind of fizzle out. And I think when I first started creating, I was like, well, everyone's creating vlogs now and mm -hmm. I should become a vlogger, even though like I was not living a life that was interesting <laughs> enough to even vlog, but I was mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna do the whole vlogging thing. And I hated it. Like I hated like just like having to put together this video that I felt wasn't like the level that I wanted it to be. And I was like, no one's really gaining anything out of this. And then I shifted my focus from, well, what is everyone else doing that's working to what do I think needs to exist that I don't see yet, mm. right? Like, if you want to create content, it's probably because you see a need for something that isn't out there yet. Mm -hmm. And like people think that like everything's been covered and everything's been talked about, but there's so many things that no one has done yet. Yeah. And you see it every time someone puts out a series or a channel or a page and you're like, oh, wow, that's different. Like, I wonder how they came up with that. And it's like they came up with it from like sitting and really thinking with themselves for a long time. Mm -hmm. Sitting, thinking, and like you mentioned, learning yeah. from, from many different resources. I, yeah. would, I, would, I would believe that, mm -hmm. right? And like you rightly mentioned, people do believe sometimes that everything's being covered. And that's just not true. No. It's not. It's not being covered or it's not being covered in their way, the yeah. unique way that mm -hmm. you could bring the same insight but it mm -hmm. will appeal to or make make a difference to a different person yeah. than somebody else bringing out that insight so yeah yeah because people think that there's like a specific format that you're supposed to follow and i'm always like well how can i show this in a way that's different so i think a really good exercise for people that are trying to become more creative with their videos is asking themselves how they could think metaphorically about this topic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i put out a video the other day called um nothing is every why nothing is everything mm -hmm. and it was basically the video was saying that it's better to do nothing and to let yourself just be than to do things that aren't good for you because mm -hmm. we live in a society that believes that like you're always supposed to be pushing yourself and going and doing something but what ends up happening when you're forcing yourself is that you end up making decisions that aren't good for your life and there's consequences to that but we're so afraid of just doing nothing for a little bit of like not creating and not mm -hmm. you know that that we end up doing things that aren't good for us so like the, so that was the topic of the video and i could have just like the typical route that the creators would, would most creators would go these days in this field they would like create the video they would go on to like video blocks download some b-roll footage and mm -hmm. then stick it over and stick over some inspirational music um and then talk about the topic and call it before you do nothing, watch this or whatever, and then mm -hmm. put it up. Um, and it would be like, okay, like it'd be like, okay, we, like we, we know the format. Maybe you're saying it in a way that's more inspiring, but overall it's not that inspiring. So I was just like, and this wasn't like one of my grand videos. It's literally like the idea came in one night and I filmed it that night and edited it that night. Like it was a short process, but I was like, well, how can I show this visual of nothingness and adding in something into your life that isn't good for you? And I just like looked around my room and that's why like when I came into this room, I was like looking around because whenever I go into any room, I like look at the objects of like, what can I do with this? Mm -hmm. So I was looking around the room and I saw a cup on my counter 
And I was like, oh, well, this looks interesting because there's, you know, there's water in here. And if you pour it out, there's nothing. But what could I put in here that would represent something that's not good? Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, dirt. I could just take dirt from outside. So I went downstairs into the garden. I picked up some dirt and I came back up. And I was like experimenting with like, well, how can I show this? So like the, maybe the empty glass represents nothing and the water represents filling your life up with something. But then the dirt represents the bad things. And mm -hmm. then pouring it out represents saying when you, when you start saying no to the things that aren't good for you. Mm -hmm. So I kind of went through this process with like the basic objects that I had available to me to mm -hmm. kind of tell a story and to make it engaging. Cause it's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not just telling you about something, but I'm also doing something. And mm -hmm. that's really interesting. So mm -hmm. I think that that's something that I found over the course of my videos to be something that's like really helped them su like succeed is when I think of, well, what could I be doing in this video mm -hmm. to explain this message better? Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit more about interesting. And I know I'm picking mm -hmm. on a word here, but it is, it is you're a creator. A mm -hmm. lot of people that are listening to it don't necessarily, they're creative, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily identify that they're creators, they mm -hmm. are coaches, they mm -hmm. are talented individuals who mm -hmm. have messages to share. Mm -hmm. They don't uh, necessarily, and I'm not trying to put everybody that is listening to it into a box, but I'm trying to give you a typical mm -hmm. example of somebody who, who may be in this industry. They are probably somebody who have just started out, they might be doing it for two, three years. They've identified they have a lot to say, mm -hmm. they have some great messages to communicate to mm -hmm. the world. They they have not studied uh, creativity the way mm -hmm. you have studied. They have not uh, understood film the way you understand film. Mm -hmm. If we had to step into their shoes, mm -hmm. how do they, apart from talking to other people, would there be any other tools for them to find interesting ideas, mm -hmm. like the way you discover interesting mm -hmm. ideas? Well, I talk a lot about like the process of creating videos and how to get, get, get into like that creative headspace in my course where like I teach people sort of how to make these videos step by step. Um, but I think it just, it kind of, for me at least, I become the most creative when I kind of step outside of like the day-to-day -day stuff that I'm typically doing, like when I put myself in a new sort of environment. So it's like, it's hard to be creative and think of a new idea when you're doing the same things every single day. Mm -hmm. So even if it's just like stepping outside for a moment, or if it's like going to a different part of town, just putting yourself in a different kind of headspace will help you kind of curate new ideas. But I also think that interacting with people is really cool. So I think that like it always comes down to this is like, I think that collaboration is one of like, um, um, like the, one of the most underrated tools when it comes to creativity. Mm -hmm. People think that like, um, people kind of want to only own their own creations and they don't want to like share that with other people. And I see it when it comes to like creators that like don't want to credit anyone and kind of want to like own all of it. It's like actually collaboration and like sharing your creativity with others is one of like the greatest gifts mm -hmm. that you have and like you should utilize it. Um, so yeah, when it comes to like what you said about interesting, um, I think that that like kind of differs from person to person. I'm trying to like think of like how to define what would be something that you would find interesting. Um, but I always think that, especially when you're creating videos for social media, you have to keep in mind that the majority of people use like very simple language and they might not understand the concepts to the depth that you understand it. So I'm always like, well, how would I explain this if I was talking to like, a child, right? Mm. Not saying that like people on social media are children, but like, mm -hmm. what's the most simple way to explain this? But the beauty of that is that you have to be creative when you're talking to children, right? Yeah. You have to explain things in a way that's like, because they, they understand things through objects and through metaphors and through, mm. you know, coming up with a story around it, right? If, mm -hmm. if you like had a kid, like I grew up with like siblings and I remember like trying to get them to do things or trying to get them to understand something, I'd have to like create a story around it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think asking yourself, well, how would I explain this to like a child mm -hmm. actually helps you become a lot more creative in that process. That's that's true. What we we do for our 
videos right mm -hmm. now and and for youtube specifically mm -hmm. is we definitely create a lot of collaborative spaces between me mm -hmm. and my writers mm -hmm. instead of just going okay i'll just write something and go for it instead of that we go okay who else can we talk to about these topics mm -hmm. we send it out to a couple of people let them feedback it comment mm -hmm. on it and then we've always found next tier of mm -hmm. creativity that can go into it which still follows a process yeah. uh, because we do do the ritual of every week there's a new video because mm -hmm. these are also educational videos not necessarily viral mm -hmm. videos so like mm -hmm. 10 12 15 minute long videos mm -hmm. that actually solve a problem mm -hmm. and what we found is as we collaborate mm -hmm. we also find very new ideas that could be in almost induced into the existing uh format that we have yes, so exactly for example i was i was collaborating with someone and they said hey i just in the end in, actually it was you who kind of incited that idea mm -hmm. and then i think i got that as a follow-up with with somebody i was talking to and and it was like instead of our videos just saying hey comment below what if you ended your video with a wish for the person that actually was watching the video i think mm -hmm. you also do that in your videos from what i remember and i'm sure this mm -hmm. came also a little bit from you uh for the matter, I think it did start from you, our, our intensive that we did mm -hmm. for the day. I think that's how you end your scripts. And I was like, oh, that's a really cool way. Mm -hmm. So it, it was like making a wish for the person once they watched the video of saying, hey, my wish for you is, or I hope that you blank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that I thought was so much more powerful to end a video than saying, hey, comment on my video below. Exactly. To say, yeah. hey, no, the power to you. This was my intent to give mm -hmm. you power go do that but I, I wanted to say that as an example of collaboration because oh absolutely yeah yeah and I think collaboration goes even deeper than that because a part of viral videos that no one speaks about is like there's the creativity and there's the process and you could like work hard and make the most beautiful video and you put it out there and then because of algorithms and because of like a whole bunch of other things people might not see it but I think that there's collaboration on the creative side of things and there's collaboration on the distribution side of things because distribution is just as important, right? So now yep. that you have this video, how do you get it in front of as many people as possible? And a lot of big creators have gained their audiences from collaborations with other artists, cross promotions. Um, it's finding people who have similar size followings that you, than you do and saying, mm -hmm. you know, can we maybe make a video together? Um, maybe if i'll share your video you can share my video it's sort of you have to build out that network so that when you have a video out you have people that are sort of distributing it for you but on the same token you have to be an active creator in that aspect as well so that's like an extremely important part of it um and you know i i have partners that i work with that could do that paid but if you're really going to go full on in as a creator then you have to sort of start building those relationships um, cause that's like one of the biggest sort of secrets and keys that yeah, no one I really talks I learned about. that secret last year when I was, I collaborated with a, with a few individuals when my book came out, Live Big. And in that collaboration, when we were talking about, all right, so we're going to do these videos. I was doing in collab videos with certain companies that produce videos, uh, which are not, I, I didn't, it was more like I wanted a different style of video. And this is how I learned to, I just hired mm -hmm. consultants mm -hmm. uh, and coaches. And I just said, you train me. I don't, I don't want to learn the hard way of really figuring it out, but that's just because I can also afford to do that at this point mm -hmm. in my life. So I hired these people thousands and thousands of dollars. And I was like, okay, so the video I saw, I was like, okay, it's a good video. I wasn't like going, holy cow, this is out of this world video. Because again, it was probably because I had to be more involved and so forth. Like I've learned mm -hmm. a lot more from then. But at that time I was like, this is a good video, but I don't see this going viral. But then I did see them going viral. And I was like, how did that happen? And so I got curious about it. Mm -hmm. And I realized there is this underground secret that only the people who actually are creators and have done this enough mm -hmm. know that they're, you, you can pay for it, but you also have partners. Yeah. Basically, it's, it's about saying, hey, if you are a good creator, I want to support you because I know my people would love that. So it's mm -hmm. not it's not a it's not a bad thing. It's a yeah. good thing. It's yeah. it's actually going, "Hey, I know your stuff is great. You know my stuff is great. How about we do this together? Where yeah. you put it out, I'll promote you, you promote me." And and just making sure that, that that collaboration, that conversation's happening. Oh yeah, because I think that people either have the people have like the mindset sometimes that like there isn't enough people or there isn't enough resources or there isn't enough like shares in the world and so people like tend to not support each other because they're like afraid of like well if i support this artist and grow their audience then it's taking away from my audience but it's really just adding more value to everyone mm -hmm. right 
And I think that people need to shift their mindsets from that to like, yes, there is enough resources to go around. There is enough people. There is enough good content. And us supporting each other is actually helping everyone. It's not taking away from everyone. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And for that matter, everybody that's listening to this right now, <laughs> if you are, if you want to be a creator, if you are a creator, just drop a comment below. Just say, let's join the pod or something like that or pod. Uh, let's just say that on the comments and people can collaborate with each other in the comment section just text mm -hmm. each other see if you like each other's swipe and style yeah um and and just make a pod like just make a group of friends that just this, love each other's mm -hmm. stuff and start there and then later mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. when you have built that audience hopefully your pod has also grown mm -hmm. as audience you will also see your uh videos going mainstream yeah right? i think people need to grow together yeah and if you can find people that are just starting out like you are you know, and you each have even a hundred followers, at least now between the five of you, you have 500 followers. And then, yeah. you know, it just, it, it will just grow and grow and grow from there. Yeah, no, that's powerful. That's powerful. And that's, we, we touched upon that, but that's so important as, as a creator, mm -hmm. as a coach is to have those collaborations because a lot of times you, you, you may hope that you will go viral, but you won't if, um, if that's, that's not the case. That's so interesting because again, that's one of the things that, like you said, it's kind of a little mm -hmm. secret, but it can be something that people can start collaborating with just oh, hundred followers, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. You might have hundred followers, get somebody who has a hundred followers, just talk yeah. and you have 200 followers now. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's beautiful. I want to touch on to something that I was uh, very, very excited about once you actually broke it down for me. And mm -hmm. I'd heard about that concept many times before, mm -hmm. but the way you described it uh, when we had our conversation, when you were coaching me and, and my wife, Nita, was when you said, okay, think about your video in three acts. Yeah. And then you said, think act one, act two, act three, and you will be able to take the story, like mm -hmm. the, just throwing back to what, what mm -hmm. we said before, is you have the moment of insight, mm -hmm. you did research, you find some content. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you structure that content into something that mm -hmm. is exciting? And yeah. I loved the idea of act one, act two, act three. So, and, and the way you approach it, mm -hmm. because I love that part. But yeah. I, I understand act one, act two, act three. I'd heard about it many times from producers, yeah. but not the way you said it, so. Yeah, so you basically have to like break your story down into three parts so that you can structure it, right? So the first part is your hook. So your hook is like, how do you get people engaged? So it's like your first line is really, really important. That's why you'll see some people starting off with like a question They'll start off with like, um, they'll just like say something that gra like just that grabs you. So you're like, your hook is that like first line that I usually spend the most time adjusting. Um, and that's also where you represent sort of what you're going to talk about. Cause you want people to like know from when the first, within the first 10 seconds, what this video is going to be about, because that will kind of help you getting the viewers that you want to get. Right. So the first act is sort of, introducing the topic you're going to speak about and then you start off kind of act two which is like the majority of your video it's like the meat of the video um with like what you've learned from it it's like the insights so you start off act two with like the first thing that you've learned right mm -hmm. and then as you're getting towards the end of act two um that's sort of when it goes into like the summary and i always try to connect the hook with like the last line of the video Mm -hmm. Right. So probably by the time this is out, like mm -hmm. will this video that I'm working on would have come out already. But um, I, I'm working on a script now for a video about never growing up. And it's like connects to the story of Peter Pan, mm -hmm. um, because I kind of throughout my life, I like never really wanted to grow up because I never thought that the things that I wanted as an adult were possible for me because I was living in such an isolating community. So I lived in my imagination and I really love the story of Peter Pan. Um, and the first line of the book of Peter Pan is all children except one grow up. Um, and mm -hmm. I kind of start out with that as the first line of my video. And then I go into saying that the words by J.M. Barry have stuck with me since I was a child. But there's also another line in his book that's called, that goes um, to die would be a big adventure, something like that. I might be butchering that line. Mm -hmm. But I kind of thought, well, how can I take that? How can I end my video off with another line from the book, but kind of twist it mm -hmm. so that it connects to the first line? So the last line of the video is um, growing up means understanding that certain parts of you would have to die mm -hmm. in order for you to feel the most alive mm -hmm. and to live would be a great adventure. 
so I kind of twisted that around and like it just it, it balances it out so beautifully and like artistically that um I was just like wow this feels like a good video so whatever happens in the middle I'm fine with because like it's sort of when you have two ends of like the the project are kind of like balancing each other out you're like okay I know I can make but sorry I can make whatever <laughs> like the the content here valuable because it's such a beautiful point it's like starting off with never wanting to grow up versus growing up is actually what's going to make you feel the most alive and then if you can play on like the words it's just yeah I love it yeah no I and I love that description because it shows the power of how important and I think you said it while you we were having our conversation was you sometimes try to start with the punch already mm -hmm. like the last line is mm -hmm. the first line that you kind of go this would be a great way to end the video yeah uh and then you reverse engineer it sometimes yeah. I, I don't know if that's always the process but and and the reason why i thought that was so powerful is because a lot of us just go at it like we go okay we, we're gonna just do this right and and the detail or the or the or the power of that detail that you put into like every mm -hmm. line into your mm -hmm. video is what makes the video so interesting and you've worked with a lot of people and a lot of companies like you mm -hmm. mentioned who do a lot of viral stuff mm -hmm. um and, and i'm sure that that's where it originates from is like the amount of value amount of time amount of curiosity amount of mm -hmm. interest they put into every or at least the more important lines if not every mm -hmm. single line but i would say even every single line because uh, I remember you saying a, a three, three and a half minute video is about 750 words or yeah. something like mm -hmm. that, uh, which is just half a page, really, or, or, or maybe I mean, a well, page, maybe a page and yeah. a half. Yeah. Well, I think in the, like most modern books, like there's like 300 pages, there's 300 words on each page in a book. So you kind of think that like a script for one of these videos is like two pages out of a book kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. Which is which is not a lot. No. You could put time, energy, interest in yeah. actually two pages of writing in a way that it could translate every word, every Everything sentence. needs to be meaningful. Everything yeah. needs to be intentional. You, When it comes to these videos, you really don't want to like waste people's time. Like you don't want to just like go off and say the things that are obvious. That's mm -hmm. kind of the things that I try to like stay away from is like asking myself, is this like an obvious thing that I'm saying right now? Is this just to like fill in space? Mm -hmm. um, or is this like actually interesting? And I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of people, the like, they they just like they just like try to fill in space for no yeah. reason with like content that um, that isn't interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's why that's why I kind of tell people like people will send me like two or three thousand words for a script, and I'm like, we're gonna have to cut. 70% of this out and they're like what <laughs> and then when I do it they're like oh wow yeah that is still the same exact story but just told and then but you should be able to tell your story in like one sentence like what's mm -hmm. like the most lean version of this right mm -hmm. and anything could be told very quickly like mm -hmm. that was always just like my philosophy around anything was like um when I had like work meetings and stuff and like I would see people would schedule like hour or two hour long meetings I'm like everything can be done in 15 minutes like mm -hmm. Let's get yeah. to the point. Yeah. Like, I'm always like that. I'm just like, let's get to the point and like move on from there. And that's kind of what you have to do is just like, let's get to the point with the videos. And then mm -hmm. when you have that mindset, you, you cut out all of the crap that mm -hmm. you don't need. Was it you who told me that try to write your sentences on Twitter? Was it you? Or did I hear it somewhere else? You may have heard that somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a bit. I don't use Twitter a lot, but no, that's that a good literally idea. Literally, somebody told me if you're writing a script, write every sentence on Twitter because it forces you to be in, to I don't use short. Twitter, so I have no idea how, what's the character limit, but they said that forces well, them to think. Well, it's not as short now. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Like give yourself yeah. a character limit. That's, I think Twitter is a cool tool. Yeah, when I, when I use it a few times, it's like, because they only give you a certain character limit, you have to be a lot more precise with your thoughts. Yeah, like you have to summarize the whole point in like few characters. Mm -hmm. So it forces you mm -hmm. to think about your content very differently because you only have that much space. Yeah. It's not to use Twitter, it's just to get that forceful nature of saying no you have to make your point within these characters yeah and it shows you that every point could be yeah broken down right like once you do it a few times you're like oh wow yep everything could kind of be 
you know, broken down into 160 characters or whatever it is. Yeah, I think it it's is. 240 <laughs> now, but yeah. yeah still short. Yeah. Uh, so, so as of now, where we have come to, and I think this is really powerful. There's almost like a master class before, and you have a course on this. So if people yeah. want to go check it out, you got a course. We'll put up the links and everything below this video so they can go check it out. Uh, and you also help people personally, but that's yeah. of course at a different mm -hmm completely different way and mm -hmm. there's a resource challenge there and you only work with a few people uh, but as of now where we've come is where you said hey let's find go back to your story mm -hmm. find your moments of aha do research around it find mm -hmm. get resourceful talk to people then take that and draft it into three acts act one act two act three now let's get into and then we talked a little bit about distribution so we're not going to go back there but let's talk about how do we get into production of it and now i know you're you are a brilliant creator so mm -hmm. the, the, some of your videos are just and we, we're going to link it up uh, <laughs> below so you can go check out her work but Thank you. some of those are just like oh my god i was like i'm not that i'm not going that far yet <laughs> maybe eventually uh but let's let's talk about somebody who's a simpler creator people who have say one camera that can sit there mm -hmm. and a couple of lights maybe a room maybe not as creative as the one that we are sitting in but a room what is that you would advise for them to think about when they are creating well i mean if they have a camera and lights and they had more than i had when i started out <laughs> so they're not that simple um it's not about the equipment. Like it's it's not about um, what equipment do I have versus what equipment do I not have. Like the people that I actually find the most talented when I'm working with like videographers are people that have like used the most basic camera but have been able to achieve the results that people with like the tens of thousands of dollars of worth of camera equipment are able to achieve. Mm -hmm. Because like if you know how to tell the story and you have an eye and like you get creative with it and you're curious about it and you think about it then you can do anything with any camera and like i know that like a lot of people will say that like you can use your iphone to make videos and like well i think it's true it is kind of limiting i think you can get mm -hmm. a lot more out of a dslr when you can play with focus and stuff like that but it's it's really never about the equipment it's always about why should people care mm -hmm. what is the story i'm trying to tell and is it really interesting or am I just putting out content for the sake of putting out content? Like, I think that like I, cause I work with some clients and like also like their social media strategies and their video strategies. And they're always like, well, how are we going to achieve these results? How are we going to get in? We always achieve them, but they're always like expecting some like grand plan for like, here's how we're going to take over the world. And the answer is simple. It's just creating good content, but like really good content. Um, and you'll feel it when you see it, you know what I mean? If you're kind of the like test that I sort of do on my own videos is like, if I'm watching any piece of content and I'm kind of like, yeah, like I'll probably forget about that in two minutes, then mm -hmm. it's not good. But if you're watching it and you're feeling something and the feeling like my feelings are like, um, very like high and like emotional, like it's either like sadness or like, um, like, um, it's not, not necessarily sadness, but it's like a realization of some sort, but the high emotion could also be laughter. Like it could be comedy. The high mm -hmm. emotion could also be anger. Like you want to get people pumped up and like angry about the environment, like things that they should be angry about. Those videos tend to go viral. So you always have to try, try to take your videos and be like, how could I ramp up the emotions mm -hmm. people feel when they're watching this? Mm -hmm. So if it's high on emotion, it'll be high on engagement. Mm. And that's why people tend to like over dramatize things and shock people and like mm -hmm. try to get their attention. But there's just so much like mediocre stuff in between. That's just like not that great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that's also why like when people are telling their own stories, they think that like things that were like really significantly emotional to them should also be significantly emotional to other people and you always have to sort of check in with yourself and be like is this just interesting because it happened to me and i experienced it or is this actually interesting right and that's why like i tend to like not over like like in my videos like i don't give too much details about my life and what i've went through even though a mm -hmm. lot of people would advise you to do that i try i try to instead um observe it in kind of a collective way in the way I see other people experiencing it and combine it. But um, yeah, I just think that 
you're never going to reach the like high emotions from your specific story unless you've done something crazy in your life. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, you climb Mount Everest and you fell off, but you survived. And like, mm-hmm. like those are the <laughs> things that people are going to like be really interested in. But like the, the, the things that we all experience that people are kind of like, oh, well, that was really impactful for me. It's like chances are other people are just not going to feel it until mm-hmm. you gain an audience that's really, really big and you have millions of followers. And then you can talk about whatever you want and people just want to learn more about you. Mm-hmm. But try to start off talking about things in a way that's more universal as mm-hmm. opposed to extremely personal. Mm. That's, that's powerful because we in our world is taught to only talk about personal, but I think there is a yeah. there's a nice mix. I, I think personal is important in, in our reality. Mm-hmm. It's good to uh, give an because, example. Yeah, yeah, it's it's also because it's uh, it's where it is still that we are hoping for a transaction mm-hmm. post uh, somebody watching a video. You know, not we're not mm-hmm. like I said, not everybody's a creator that's watching this. There's yeah. a lot of people who are coaches and consultants and trainers and teachers. And what they hope for is that there's also a relation between them and the person that's watching. And telling personal stories does do that, uh, at least from from my perspective and my yeah. lens. Yeah. So 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 I think there's there's definitely an intersection of both of them mm-hmm. because I don't think we do enough of collective stuff. So that definitely is a yeah. big takeaway I think uh, from this conversation is to say, hey, how can we have more collective? Uh, type of dialogue with with our audience to be able to have that Mm -hmm. story being told Mm -hmm. differently uh, Mm -hmm. and more interestingly so i want to touch on one more thing before before we before we wrap for the for Mm -hmm. this conversation at least because we've been talking for like an hour and a half at this point (laughs) uh so so how important is it to be consistent i know we talked Mm -hmm. about it a little bit where we said you don't have to act just to Mm -hmm. be consistent but what I found in my personal story, in my own mm-hmm. personal journey, is that I got better because I didn't stop doing it, even if I thought it sucked. Mm-hmm. Like, I kept doing it till mm-hmm. the time I got good at it. Now, mm-hmm. again, this could be very personal to me, but I want to mm-hmm. get your take on what do you yeah. think about it. I that? think when you're first starting out, you need to do that because mm-hmm. you need to build the muscles you need in order to create good content. Um, And a lot of times, like me too, like I started off making vlogs and that didn't work and I jumped onto something else and something else until I found the thing that I liked and I was like, I'm going to create a video every week for the rest of my life. And then after like a few months, I was like, I can't do this anymore. But I built up the emotion, I built up the muscles I needed in order to build the content when I felt like the time was right to create the content. So I think when you're first starting out, yes, go out create like crazy, decide that you're going to put out at least one video a week for the next three months and just create it even if you think it sucks and get feedback and really look at the feedback and take some like takeaways from the feedback of how you're going to improve your piece of content next. I don't like the um, method of filming 10 videos and then lining them up because I think that you really need to learn week by week to improve your content. Because if like you made mistakes in week one, but you created 10 videos using that same mindset, then you're going to just get the same results on week 10. So I think in the beginning, you need to just be creating on a week to week basis and then learn from it, learn from it, learn from it, test it, test it. Yeah. And one thing's going to click. And then when that thing clicks, you'll be like, okay, now I'm going to try to duplicate this in different ways. And that's when things get interesting and exciting and things start to work. But then you'll get to a point where you're like, well, I don't feel inspired right now. And I don't feel like I want to create right now. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a break and I'm going to live my life and experience my life so that when I do come back to it, I'll come back even stronger. And I think that I've kind of, I'm just saying it because I feel like that's a process that I went through in the last year and I'm seeing myself kind of come out of it right now. And it's, incredible it's like so amazing to like know how to tell the stories in the way that i want to tell them it's beautiful that's Mm -hmm. beautiful thank you so much for taking the time to come down today and have this conversation before we leave is there anything that you would love to share with our audience something that you may think that i should have asked you or any message that you have for we are talking to like i said coaches consultants Mm -hmm. teachers educators experts Yeah, um, I think it's just like, I'll be excited to see what people kind of create. If like, if you listen to this and it inspired you to go out and create, like, I'd love to connect with you. 
Um, I'd love to like hear your story. Um, if there's any ways that we can collaborate on something, I'm always open to that. So yeah. So and and we'll hook up everything yeah, below this video. Sure. And if you're listening it on iTunes or anything like that, I'm sure there's a way to put that in as well. So we'll we'll add every all the details about how to connect with Sarah, her different platforms. Uh, her program uh, link, we're gonna put that up. We're gonna put up some of your videos so people can check cool. out what you've done. Uh, some of the, some of my favorites, definitely, thank for you. sure. So thank you, thank you again for taking the time, sharing all this so wonderful much, insight. Thank you so much. Thanks.